In 2015, Universal Studios Hollywood updated the studio tour with a brand new finale based on the very lucrative Fast and Furious franchise. While many fans of the franchise enjoyed it, the new segment garnered mixed reviews with some liking it and others hating it. When it was announced that it would be coming to Florida as a standalone attraction, fans were curious what would become of fleshing out the experience into a full attraction. Only to be greeted with a really well-themed queue, long and awkward exposition-filled pre-shows, and the exact same sequence as the tram tour, now in 2D. This version is widely considered to be one of the worst theme park attractions of all time. But does this ride deserve the hate that it gets? I'm RCT3 is Epic, and strap in for a not that intense ride as I explain my defense of Fast and Furious Supercharge. Now, a lot of you right now are thinking, yes, it absolutely does deserve it, but I think with a few minor tweaks, the attraction could actually be not only passable, but actually pretty good. But let's start with the problems. First, there's the glaringly obvious. It fails to meet the expectations of a Fast and Furious ride. What should have been a roller coaster is just a simulator with bad acting, bad CGI, and in Florida, the queue takes up about 66% of the whole experience. It's rare that the unofficially done Universal Studios Roblox makes a better ride than the actual Universal Studios does. And all they did was just make rock and roller coaster but themed to street racing. But if you look at it in a different way, you'll notice that it actually shares some aspects with some pretty good attraction. That's because it's an accidental adventure. An accidental adventure ride is any attraction, not recapping a movie, in which the main portion of the ride is narratively not supposed to happen. These include some of the best rides out there, like the Indiana Jones Adventure, Revenge of the Mummy, The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, Star Tours, even Wings Over Washington. I mean, if you think about it, Supercharged is really just car tours. But what else does it do right? Well, for starters, the aforementioned queue in Florida is quite well done and the ridiculous action-bending stunts of the films are on full display during the actual ride, even if they are just on a screen. With all that, I think both the bizarre vehicle choices actually make sense when you factor in that story-wise, it's not supposed to happen. Now, if you switch from the idea of racing with Dominic Toretto to the idea of being rescued by Dominic Toretto, this whole thing tends to make a lot more sense. Kind of like that one mountain chase in Furious 7. But now you're in the bus, and instead of being attacked, you're being rescued. Another thing most people don't realize is that the attraction references the film franchise in lots of ways from very subtle to extremely obvious. Obvious things like car references, and also subtle things like the chase scene being a giant homage to the chase in Fast Five with you as the safe. Now, as I mentioned, the ride isn't perfect. Far from it. But how can you improve what you have without just throwing it all away and starting over? Well, that's rather simple. It only takes two to three steps depending on your coast. Starting with the most obvious. They're gonna have the heat of fire flying at you. Add that. But also there's one other thing that you can add that improves most other rides. Music. Being the nerdy musician that I am, I've actually taken the time to create a custom tailored soundtrack to this attraction, and I think having it or any other intense music going on during the chase would greatly heighten the suspense and pump up the audience a lot more than just the regular silence that's there now. Having seen a Fast and Furious film in 4DX, that is the caliber of motion needed to really sell this type of experience. If you have the time to look around and question any of the crazy stuff happening on your left or right, it's not intense enough. Now on the studio tour, I can understand not jostling the riders around as much since it's only at the end of a much longer and more family-friendly experience than in Florida. However, in Florida, it's a standalone attraction 
you need to up that motion a bit to really make it feel much more worth the time to be a separate attraction. So overall, I'm in the minority and I actually like this attraction. But, I do understand the hate that it gets, and I will not hesitate to crack some jokes at its expense, or the big dumb franchise that it came from. But, at the end of the day, I love the franchise, and I like the ride. So feel free to tell me how much of an idiot I am in the comments, and until next time, I'm RCT3 is Epic, thanks for watching! Also, these things are not full-size helicopters, they are drones, which is why Shaw says, meaning no, Vin Diesel does not suddenly grow to the size of a helicopter, he is just grabbing onto a small drone.